All right, so obviously Skunk Works got an update. If you guys haven't checked out the NVIDIA Garage video, you guys can go to their channel. I'll link it down below and you can see what we did. Um, but I'm still not done tweaking this system. This is the old motherboard and CPU from the Skunk Works like revision four. This is the X99 Classified from EVGA. It's also got my Intel 6950X processor, which you should know by now, is a truly soldered IHS, which is why there's a little hole on there. That's so that some of the gases can get out when they heat it up and the, and the solder actually solidifies. Um, this was amazing on temperatures. It was an amazing overclocker. But now that I've got a 7960XE in here, I am dealing with some very funky temperatures that has probably forced me to have to delid now. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna test before and after. Certainly not the first time anyone's done delitting on YouTube, but it's gonna be the first time I'm officially showing you guys, with the exception of the live stream we did with the 7980XE, and we're gonna see whether or not it's worth voiding that warranty. So uh, let's keep our fingers crossed, because I don't have to take the system apart again if I break it. EVGA offers a full range of components, including video cards, motherboards, power supplies, cases, and peripherals. Regardless of your needs, EVGA is sure to have you covered. To see what EVGA can do for your next build, head to EVGA.com. Now, before I delit it, I kind of want to show you guys what I'm dealing with here. Now, I'm running 4.6 gigahertz, which is definitely no slouch on a 16 core processor. Uh, but the voltage I'm using to run that's not that high and the temperatures we're seeing are very high. Now, one of the tests I like to do is Cinebench. It's an AVX instruction and so it, it definitely can hammer the PC and I can see what the temperatures are going to spike to long before the coolant is ever saturated. So what that means is the temperature is gonna shoot up to a really high number and then as the coolant gets hotter, if you're running a long-term AVX instruction, then it's only gonna get hotter from there, if that makes sense. So if you see the temps shoot up immediately, that's before the water's even gotten hot. That's heat being trapped in the package itself and never making it to the loop. So we've got a hardware monitor open right here. You can see we're idling our cores down in the 20s, but that's because I have balance mode going for power and that's specifically because of temperatures. So right now we're idling at 25, 23-ish on the cores, 1.3 to 1.4 gigahertz on the CPU because of balance mode. But as soon as I run this test, our temperatures, as you can see right here, are 60, 80, 84, 85, 86, 87, 89. You can see our cores are hitting 80s, almost 90s, and there's a 90C right there, there's a 90C on the package. And our score is decent inside of Cinebench. But remember, this is with fairly low voltage. Our voltage did hit 1.28, 1.27, which is higher than stock, obviously, which runs at like 1.18-ish or something like that. But on Skunk Works, I was actually able to run 1.35 and 4.9 daily on that, on the 6950X. Now, yes, I know we have more core density in here, but I also know what temperatures we were able to achieve on the 7980XE once we delitted it, even on standard cooling, so I decided I'm gonna go ahead and do it with Skunk Works and show you guys sort of the process. Um, yes, I am well aware that that completely voids the warranty, which is something you guys should keep in mind if you're gonna be doing this, but uh, Skunk Works kind of keeps its hardware uh, long-term. That's why this has been running ever since launch in the 6950XE. Uh, this is gonna destroy its resale, but I don't resell my parts. I'm sure you guys have kind of noticed. So this is my personal rig and I want to get as much out of it as I possibly can. And if I, for some reason, do destroy the CPU, which is always a risk when you delid, I do have another 7980XE I can stick in there, which I don't really want to though. Um, or we've got the 9980XE coming, which is always an option. Let's go ahead and take a look at um, OCCT as well, which is a long-term test. And I'm gonna show you what happens when I go to small data set. Small data set is something that tends to cause problems in terms of, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, small data set is more uh, ta tasking of your system. If we go large data set, it's not quite as, as ta taxing. I don't wanna say tasking. It's not quite as taxing on your system, but I'm gonna show you what happens here. Because I can't push the voltage any higher, you guys just saw what was happening in Cinebench. We're gonna hit TJ Maxx of 105 if I push the voltage any higher than it already is. We're actually undervolting the CPU, which means when we run this particular task, <laughs> Phil's running into things, <laughs> and there it goes. Did you catch it? Yeah, I did. Okay, since you're busy running into walls back there. <laughs> so what we just dealt with right there is actually an undervolt situation where uh, the CPU run, ran out of power and it ran out of power so dramatically it didn't even have time to blue screen and kind of catch itself. It just immediately shuts off the system and restarts with this error code 
on the motherboard. So that's hopefully what we're going to eliminate. So I'm not gonna change any of my settings. I'm just gonna deal at it, put it back in there and compare the results. Fortunately, the CPU loop is the easiest one to drain. So you can learn a lot from the spread pattern of your thermal paste and check this out. You can see how we have an uneven spot on this IHS. See how it's more spread out from there, meaning it's real thin in the center. And you can see the same thing right there, very thin in the center and more spread out to the side. So we actually think that this IHS may not be perfectly flat. We know the, the blocks are flat and I could actually use a straight edge to show that, but the IHS, not something that was a problem, I think, all that recently. I haven't heard a lot of people complaining about IHSs not being flat, but that's where lapping came in. Lapping of, of water, you know, blocks, lapping of air coolers, lapping of IHSs. And I'm thinking that's something I'm gonna do today on top of the D-lid. You wanna know how it's high centered, how it's got a, d uh, a dome in the middle? <laughs> Look at that. So here's the 6950X, not D-lidded obviously, because it's soldered. <laughs> that is more or less what we would expect, not a fucking top. Is anyone cringing at this? Woo! At least it's not the other way, like facing. <laughs> now when you lap something, you need to use glass because glass is perfectly flat. Like I couldn't do this on the table because it's not flat enough. Now I still have the, the cover on this tempered glass right here because I don't want to scratch the glass. We're going to tape down sandpaper and lap it. But because the glass is flatter than the table, watch how much it spins on the glass. Whoa, shit. <laughs> Look at that. Intel, what are you doing? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and put this back in the system. You can see that, that copper area where we sort of went through the top coating of the IHS. That's not gonna hurt anything. We have a theory that maybe this is our problem. We're gonna see what happens right now, and then we will we'll go from there. I don't wanna deal with it. I'd love to get away with just a lap, you know, a quick lapping on the IHS. Technically, I should also be lapping the block, but the block, we put up a straight edge on it and it's pretty damn flat. So we're just gonna leave the block alone and see what this does. Look at this, our idle temps down in the low 20s. So let's go ahead and do a Cinebench run because we know that that was what definitely hammered it. 72, 80, 81 on the package, 82, 83, 80. So what is that? That's already what, like 10C improvement? So without even delitting so far, we are seeing a serious improvement here in Cinebench. I don't feel like I need to do a delid. I'm torn, whatever, let's delit it. What the hell? Wow, yeah, okay. So that's what you kind of expect to see as it's dripping all over my hand. Ah, ah! So, I mean, it's perfectly flat. You can see how the thickness, ladies, is all around the outside. But with this being the internet, I know this wouldn't have been good enough. So you guys are gonna want me to do lit it. And that's what we're about to do. <laughs> Nothing happened here. <laughs> I may have put a little bit too much alcohol on the IHS. Okay, so we're delitted now. We've got the Gelid X GC Extreme under the IHS and on top of it, so here's our temps right there, shooting 65, 78, 81, 82, 83, 82, 84, 82. That's package temp, by the way. The cores are sitting in the 60s and 70s. So not really an improvement with the D-lid versus before, which I was kind of afraid of, um, you know, because I just, there was no need to do it, honestly. But that's okay. These temperatures are still very well with what I would expect them to be, considering the fact that it is uh, Skylake X, which runs very hot, and we are running 1.3 volts on this. We decided this video was just to take you guys along for the ride. Uh, I think Phil might agree. The biggest improvement we saw here was with the fixing of the, con the convexed uh, IHS, because if it's not making a, a flat mated surface, and as you saw when we first took it off, you could see that it was not making good contact except for a very small portion of the center of the die. And the IHS is there because it's a heat spreader. It's an heat spreader, because grammar, good, gooder for me. It's an IHS, so it's designed to spread the heat to a larger surface area for more efficient dissipation of heat. And if it's only doing it over a small percentage of that, obviously that's not spreading the heat. It's focusing the heat, which is bad. So guys, next time you do your builds, check your CPUs. I, I, didn't, I don't necessarily recommend putting it down like a top and spinning it, but if it spins, then you'll know you have the same problem we do and a simple lapping with uh, multi-grit sandpaper and stepping it up and polishing it 
can give you improvements as we saw here, but it will probably void your warranty. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Now Skunk Works can be considered done and go home, finally.